In this video, I want to show you the powerful what if analysis tools in Microsoft Excel. Uh, I'm going to pick on the data menu. And then notice over here, it says what if analysis. I want to show you those three tools, the scenario manager, the goal seek, and the data table. Now I'm using Excel 2016 in this video. This would also work in Excel 2013, Excel 2010, Excel 2007. This has been around for a while. First, let's talk about the scenarios. So the scenarios means maybe you have different solutions for a, a, a problem and uh, you wanna go back and forth among the different scenarios. So you wanna set these up. I'm gonna highlight from A4 to C4. Those are the cells that will change for each different scenario. And I'll pick on the data menu up top, data, and we'll come over here and we'll pick on what if analysis. Good, and we'll go to the scenario manager. Then you'll have this window. Now you have to add the scenarios in, but it's not hard to do. So I'll pick on add. Now you wanna give each scenario a name. Let's say I'm trying to buy a four bedroom, uh, three bath house. And let's say I'm gonna find, find that house in Philadelphia. So I'm gonna call it Philadelphia there. And the changing cell says A4 through C4, that is correct. Those are the cells that we had highlight. Uh, and those, those are the cells that will change for each different scenario. And you can put in anything for the comment or you can leave that blank. That's really optional. That's for, for documentation purposes only. More importantly, I wanna give that a good name. And the changing cell says A4 through C4. I'm gonna click on OK. Then what you would do is you would plug in the values for those particular uh, for that particular opportunity. So let's say, I'm just making up numbers here. Let's say the amount is gonna be 300,000. Term on this one is 20 years. And for the interest, I'll type in 0 0.04. Each different scenario can have any combination of those numbers and you can have as many as you need. So I'll click on OK. And notice how I have a scenario for uh, Philadelphia. Now you can have as many of these as you need. Let's add a couple more. I'll pick on add. Uh, so maybe another city in Pennsylvania is uh, King of Prussia. So I'll give it a name and then the changing cell still says A4 through C4, which is correct. And I'll click on OK. Now you would plug in the values for that particular opportunity. So I'm, gonna, I'm just making up numbers. I'll type in 350,000 for the amount. Maybe the term on this one is 25 years, and maybe the interest is 3.5%, so we'll do 0 0.035. Each different scenario can have any combination of those numbers, and you can have as many as you need. I'll pick on OK. And I, I'll add another one. I'll pick on Add, and I'll type in Harrisburg. And for the changing cells, it still says A4 through C4, which is correct. And I'll click on OK. And then you would plug the values in for that particular opportunity. So maybe that one is 275,000, maybe it's for 30 years at 4%, I'll do 0.04. I'll click on OK. Now I have the different scenarios. Clearly you can have as many as you wanted to there. Now, before I continue, I'll pick on close and I'm gonna save the spreadsheet. When you save the spreadsheet, the scenarios will save with it. So I'll pick on save. Now, let me show you the true purpose of the scenario screen. I'll pick on what if analysis, I'll pick on scenario manager, and now we see the three that we made. So I'll pick on one of those and I'll come down here and pick on show. Now, when I pick on show, watch the numbers over here. Notice how I'll plug the numbers into the spreadsheet and then you can see how the bottom lines were affected by that. I'll pick on King of Prussia and I'll pick on show. Notice how it plugs those numbers in and I'll pick on Harrisburg and I'll pick on show. So you can easily you can easily go back and forth. You're not gonna fumble with your numbers at the meeting. The meeting is gonna go a lot smoother because of the scenarios. So you can easily go back and forth as you can see, which is the whole point. Now I want you to think outside of the box. It's not just for this example, it's anywhere where you might have multiple solutions and you wanna go back and forth among this. Now, what if you want to see all of those on the same screen at the same time? Well, that's what summary means. I'm gonna pick on summary. It's asking for the result cells. In other words, what cells change when the other cells change? So I'm gonna highlight 
from D4 to F4. D4 through F4 is the uh, result cells. When I click on OK, it's going to go to a different sheet. Notice now we're on a different sheet, and it shows those side by side. Then maybe you can print this out for the other person as a takeaway or as a deliverable. So that really ties together really nicely. All right, so just to review the, uh, the scenarios, you have any kind of mathematical model, and it probably has to have at least one formula. We're going to highlight the cells that we want to change, and then we'll pick on uh, data, and then what if analysis, and then scenario manager. And you can see how we set this up from there. Now, the next tool I want to show you within the what if analysis group is called the goal seek. The goal seek is all about trying to get to a bottom line or a target number for a, a formula. So in this case, uh, we have 300,000 for the uh, principal amount, 20 years for the term, actually you want to type in 30 there, and 4% for the interest rate. If I pick on cell D4, D4 has a formula that's called PMT, which means payment. And I'm sure it's under the financial category of your built-in functions. And it really does calculate the payment based on the principal and the term and the interest rate. Here's how we're going to use the goal seek. Let's say between you and your spouse or whoever owns your house with you, you decide that you can afford $1,100 for your monthly payment. The question is, how much does a, a, a principal have to be so that this will go down to $1,100? The goal seek is going to get us there. The goal seek is all about trying to get to a bottom line or a target number for a formula. So I'm going to pick on cell D4, where the formula is, and I'll pick in the data menu, and I'll pick on what if analysis, and we'll go with goal seek. Then we get this window. Set cell D4. That always has to be a cell that has a formula, like D4 does. Then I'll type in 1100. That's your target number. And then for the changing cell, we'll click on cell A4. Set cell D4 to value 1100 by changing cell A4. What are we asking for? We're saying what number does A4 have to be so that D4 will become $1100? I'm going to click on OK. It's going to give us the result. It turns out that A4 has to be exactly $230,407, and then D4 will go down to $1100. Notice how D4 still has the formula, and the formula still works. It actually reversed engineered the formula to determine that if A4 were $230,407, D4 would become $1,100. So again, I want you to think outside of the box. It's not just for this example. It's anywhere you have a formula, and you're trying to get to the bottom line or a target number for that formula. Let's try it again. I'll pick on what if analysis, goal seek. Set cell D4. That has to be a cell that has a formula. This time, let's say I'm looking for the payment to be 1600 by changing cell A4. Set cell D4 to value 1600 by changing cell A4. I'll click on OK. And this time, A4 has to be exactly $335,138, and then D4 became $1,600. So that's how you can use the goal seek to get to a bottom line or a target number for a formula. Now, if you notice, there's another what if analysis tool that's called the data table. Let's explore that one. Notice how I have a sheet down here that's called the data table. Now, I want you to think of this as a rectangle. And uh, I'm going to highlight where the rectangle is on my screen. And notice how the upper left-hand corner of the rectangle has to have a formula. So notice how B9 has that same formula. So that's really going to be the upper left-hand corner of the rectangle. The first column of the rectangle has to be a number, has to be numbers that will replace something in that formula. And the first row of the rectangle has to be other numbers that will replace something in that formula. So the data table will extract will extrapolate all these different um, principal amounts with all the different terms. So you, you would have a formula in the upper left-hand corner, and then if we set up this data table correctly, it should extrapolate every possible combination 
with these principal amounts and with these, um, with these terms. Notice how I have the rectangle highlight. And once again, we can see how the upper left-hand corner of the rectangle does contain a formula that's very important. I'll pick on what if analysis and I'll pick on data table. We have a simple little window here. The row input cell means what part of that formula is this row of numbers going to replace? So I'm going to type in B4 there. Notice how B4 is in the formula. So these numbers will replace the B4 part of that formula. Then it says column input cell. That means what part of the formula is this column of numbers going to replace? I'm going to type in A4. Notice how cell A4 is also in the formula. So in other words, instead of using A4, we'll use the numbers in column B. And instead of using B4 in that formula, we'll use the numbers in row 9. When I click on OK here, it's going to give me every possible combination of the different terms and the different um, uh, principal amounts. And it just extrapolated, extrapolated that whole thing. All right, so I'm going to undo that so we can do it again. Let's go back to the data table sheet. Uh, so in this case, I could just uh, erase those. All right, so we have a rectangle. The upper left-hand corner of the rectangle contains a formula. The first row of the rectangle contains numbers that you want to replace within that formula. And the first column replace, has other numbers that you want to replace in that formula. So I'm going to highlight the whole rectangle. Okay. And it would, you know, it would be just like that. Then I'll pick on what if analysis data table. The row input cell means what part of that formula is this row of numbers going to replace? I'll type in B4. And the column input cell means what part of, the, of that formula is the column of numbers, the first column going to replace? And I'll type in A4. Notice how B4 is in that formula and A4 is in that formula as well. That's very important that you make that connection. I'm going to click on OK. And just like that, it gave me every possible combination. So in other words, the monthly payment, if it was 250000 and uh, you know 10 years, would be 2591 now, of course, I'd probably format all these, but that's not a problem. Uh, we'll put them in the home menu, and um, let's see, we make them a uh, currency format. Good. Everybody cleans it up very nicely. 